state's mm -hmm. attorney uh, in Baltimore has decided to stop prosecuting cases of simple marijuana possession. Also, they, she will vacate the convictions of 5,000 people on the same charge. Uh, joining us right now is state's attorney Marilyn Mosby. Uh, Marilyn, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you, Roland? I'm doing great. I mean, obviously, this is a uh, huge news. Um, why did you decide to make this decision now? Well, for several reasons. First and foremost, there's absolutely no public safety value um, to the prosecution of marijuana, um, which has been legalized in half the states across the country. It's disproportionately impacted communities of color. It erodes public trust because of that disparate sort of enforcement. Um, and it's costly and counterproductive to the limited uses of resources that we have in a city like Baltimore. In 2017, we had 343 homicides with a year in clearance rate of 31%. Last year, 316 murders, a 26% year in clearance rate. It's time for us to get serious about what makes us safe, and jailing people for possession of marijuana is, is not what does it. Uh, we have seen other uh, DAs across the country do this exact same thing. At the same time, while you have states that are also <laughs> legalizing marijuana, and so you sort of have this um, back and forth uh, when it comes to this issue. One of the things that also jumps out when we talk about uh, this notion of, um, of vacating this is that so many people uh, were sent to prison for long periods of time for basic yeah. marijuana use, and now you have folks who are making billions off the very same drug. Correct. You're absolutely right, Roland. And, and the problem is not just in the past, <coughs> it's also in the present. So in 2010, the ACLU put out a report. In Maryland, the arrest rate for possession of marijuana was the fourth highest in the nation. And in Baltimore City, the disparity was even more glaring because you were six times more likely to be arrested for marijuana possession if you were a black person. You would think that that was the, the ways of the past, but even after the decriminalization of marijuana of 10 grams or less, you still have a disparate sort of um, role that or enforcement that is being applied to black people differently. In 2015, it's now a civil citation in which they can issue the Baltimore Police Department. 89% of the citations that they issued citywide were black. 2016, 94% were black. In 2017, 95% were the black people. And the most glaring sort of statistic is that 42% of the citations that were issued in only one of nine police districts throughout the city happened in West Baltimore. In West Baltimore, where their population is 95% black, right, and, 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 and impoverished. So what that says to me is that you're targeting and enforcing these laws desperately, even though the research has, has indicated that the use of marijuana among white and black people is the same, but you're targeting black poor people in West Baltimore. And what do you hope other DAs will do, uh, law and order folks will do when it comes to this whole issue of marijuana prosecutions? Uh, because like I said, we have seen significant numbers of people locked up. You also now have uh, NFL players and former players who are talking about uh, the use of cannabis uh, to make it easier uh, when it comes to pain. We have an opioid crisis as well. Uh, so it seems that more and more people are coming to realize that just locking folks up and throwing the key away doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense in that we should be utilizing those resources towards solving homicides, going after violent offenders. You ask a mother who lost her son where she'd like us as law enforcement to spend our money and our time and our resources, she's not going to say our marijuana possession. And you're absolutely right about the collateral consequences that are, are clearly evident in communities like West Baltimore, that once you get involved in the criminal justice system, you understand there are collateral consequences that come with that. The social, economic, political debilities that result from being involved in the criminal justice system that have long-term effects on people. So it, it can affect adoptions and housing and immigration, employment, professional licenses. It's just a number of, of, of collateral consequences that come with focusing our time and our attention on, on marijuana possession. All right, then, Marilyn Mosby, we certainly appreciate it. Thanks so very much for joining us. No, thank you for having me, Roland. You want to check out Roland Martin Unfiltered? YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roland Martin Unfiltered. See that name right there? Roland Martin Unfiltered.
like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications so when we go live, you'll know it. Martin.